Yo, what is going on guys? Your boy is back with a Beyblade revolution. So I did just watch the episodes of Beyblade Burst Sparking and that was awesome. They're really starting off the series with a bang or should I say spark. Um, but anyway, I did also get my sparking bays in the mail uh, last week or earlier this week and they're pretty cool. But what if I told you guys I've already 3D printed some sparking parts. That's right. Um, I know it's early, but um, with the help of a few friends, that being Weeaboo and Zero, or Level Zero, um, we all kind of teamed up and created functional working Beyblade Burst Sparking or Super King 3D printed parts. Well, that's a mouthful. But yeah, I got into 3D printing um, about three weeks ago, and I've been doing that behind the scenes. If you guys have been following my community tab posts at all, you'll notice that I've printed quite a few things. And um, yeah, I'm probably gonna make a video about that later talking more about it, but I wanted to show you guys these parts. So, um, you know what? Let's let's go ahead and just get a close up. But instead of Putty Squad, why don't we start 3D squad so 3d squad where are you at because i think this is the beginning of a new phase on this channel as far as like content i really want to bring 3d printing more to this channel seeing that i was one of the first in the community and i, I just want to bring that back so let's make that happen make sure you guys comment down below hashtag 3d squad um, because trust me you're going to see a lot of content now that's enough talking um it's really funny though, because in the anime, they were actually making their own Beyblades uh, with 3D printing. Granted, they were using FDM printers, I'm using resin, um, but yeah, they technically 3D printed their own Beyblades and created these in the anime, of course. So let's, let's just look at the sparking system or Super King system. Um, here we have Glide Ragnarok, Wheel Revolve. Uh, I'm sure you guys are familiar with the system, but I just want to show you guys in detail, like what it is exactly. So here we go. The sparking system is unique in that it's not GT, but it kind of is like GT and it kind of resembles Nightmare Long and it's, if you guys remember that Beyblade from a while back. So let's start off with just this. This is the, I want to say it's the core but I'm sure my editor will correct me there. Um, and yeah, this piece kind of just sits in the center. It really reminds me of a fancier God chip. And really, I don't know if this affects anything as far as like aesthetics. There might be some tightness that it affects as far as the driver, but who knows? Um, we also have the chip. So this is kind of like the GT chip, but the teeth aren't attached. Instead, it just provides these uh, tabs. And then yeah, it's just like a smaller GT chip. And in this case, we have Ragnarok, but there are others. So we have like Hyperion, Helios, and whatnot. And then we have the, I want to call this the ring. I think it's the ring. So in this case, uh, the ring is left or right, and it tells you by the uh, letter here, it tells you what direction to turn it in. And yeah, this is basically the center. This is where most of your contacts will be. Uh, will be made and I think usually the gimmicks are attached to this thing and then we have a special chassis here and that this is uh I want to say this is 1s yeah 1s um this chassis is special in that you can use a disc with it so if I put this together okay so yeah the disc and driver are just like any other disc and driver and it all comes together so for Glad Ragnarok, that's the case, but then you look at something like uh, Super Hyperion or King Helios, and you get the double chassis. It's not chassis, by the way, it's chassis. Um, and this is literally just like all of it. There's, there's not a lot of pieces at play um, as far as, you know, like what's involved. So you still have the chip, the core, the, I want to call this the, uh, uh, what is this called? The ring. And then the double chassis is the disc and the chassis combined in one. And so it all just turns together. And this contains the teeth, 
just like the other chassis has teeth in it, um, except this, it's a lot heavier because it includes a disc component with it. And then of course your driver. So that's basically the sparking system in a nutshell. Um, you attach your driver and you really just turn the driver. You don't turn the disc per se. Um, so that's really neat. And because there's two different chassis, 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 what's the plural for chassis? I don't know. Um, you have the option of using a disc or not using a disc. And so that's just, it's a really cool system. Um, I like that it's modular and that it's similar to GT, but um, also just, it's a whole different level of customization. But back to the 3D printing. Um, I want to start off with just the core. So we have two of them. I'll show you this. This is the basic core. And um, let me go ahead and compare it. I'm going to use Glide Ragnarok for the comparison because I did, uh, or rather, I provided pictures of Glide Ragnarok because uh, the people that I'm working with, Level Zero and Weeaboo, uh, needed the pictures as a reference. So check this out. This is made out of resin, a gray ABS-like resin. It's really tough and durable. And this is the TT one. So if you guys can see, they are very similar. There are some slight differences in sizing, but really this is the first prototype that we've printed or that I've printed. So it's not gonna be perfect, but this is really good. It's a really good start. Um, and yeah, it, it's, pretty, it's pretty on point. I'd say it's about 90% accurate. There's some minor things that need to be tweaked, but it works and that's the most important thing. So there you have it. And then of course they made a custom Valkyrie one, if you guys can see, there's a small V there. So this is just a little teaser for an upcoming custom 3D printer baby that I may or may not be showing in a future video, but we'll see. And then we also have this piece, which is just like the chip that I've showed you guys before. Um, so here's Ragnarok for comparison. This is just a prototype again, so it's just flat. It doesn't really have any detail in it. And it's really just a functional piece. Now it did break here. That's my fault. I, probably, I applied too much pressure on these tabs, which are a little bit fragile, but no big deal. It still works. And then the most like insane part is the uh, ring. So this was really just kind of eyeballed by both of them and they modeled it as best they could. And it actually came out like nearly perfect. Um, if you guys can see, if you line it up, it's, it's really close as far as like the measurements, all this is upside down. Um, okay. So check this out. Like it's, it's almost like a direct replica, um, as far as like, uh, measurements. So super, super cool that we have a functioning prototype. So do you guys remember Proto at all? And that's just an open-ended question. Um, because I'm sure you guys do if you follow this channel long enough. Proto was my first ever 3D printed Beyblade and that thing was powerful because it was a circle. So we're going to give it an evolution for sparking because I feel like it needs one after so long. We're skipping a generation because why not? So let's make Proto. We have all the pieces we need. I'm going to not use this core. So let's go ahead and put it together. Um, first things first, we're going to take our chip and attach the core boom we have our core and our chip they fit just fine and then we add our ring so with this we want to make sure that we line it up from the bigger holes here and then turn to the right so we can kind of get it clicked in all right so did the best i could to make sure that it all kind of just fits together because it is a basic design there's really not a lot at play um, but this chip is kind of broken. I mean, it still works for this video. So this is our proto layer. Now, of course, um, we need a chassis. So if you guys remembered on proto, the original proto, I used, I want to say it was zero flow. I don't remember the exact combo or maybe it was four flow. Um, we're going to use a double chassis now to upgrade it. So instead of using an ordinary disc, we're going to go ahead and use a double chassis because I feel like that's a deserving uh, disc. And so here we go. It all fits together. Um, yeah, there's not much to say. Like I said, it's it's almost like a perfect fit. Just check that out. Like it, 
it looks so awkward like this because the layer itself is tiny, but it's proto. It's a circle. It's supposed to be tiny and just not very detailed. Yeah, this, this is hilarious. So I am just going to keep it simple and stick with bearing. All right, I found my wool board. So I'm going to use the bearing because it actually matches the layer. Um, it's not the exact shade of gray, but they both have a prototype gray to it. Um, this is the color of the resin. It's just a basic gray and you can even paint it, you know, so it just opens a lot of possibilities. But boom, you guys hear that? It clicks, it fits. It's awesome. So we need to get some battles, guys. Um, let's see if it will hold up. I have a lot of high hopes for this. Um, because it's got a double chassis, it works, everything fits together, and um, we'll make sure that the resin is actually durable enough because it may or may not break. So, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my stadium and we'll do some test battles. All right, I'm back with my black stadium because I haven't used it in a while, but man, what was this here? All right, let's make sure that was out of the way. Um, I have my Proto now, sparking version, with 1A in bearing. And if you guys don't believe me, this thing does launch normally. Boom. Look at that. Like, it looks so awkward just because it's super round and it's tiny compared to the chassis, but it works. Now, um, I wanted to do test battles between the other two um, Beyblades, that being, I don't know, is this Helios? Yeah, yeah, I always mix them up. And Ragnarok. So I don't want to get my other Beyblades out because I'm too lazy. Um, so let's start off. There you go. Got some hits in. Looks like, oh, we got a burst on Ragnarok. How does this thing even burst stuff? Like, it's a circle. Like, why, why is it bursting stuff? Okay. Jeez, that was a violent burst. All right, let's keep moving. Minor hits. Finally, no burst. See, the cool thing about this chassis is that it really weighs down um, the Beyblade because it's so heavy. Oh my gosh, that was a double burst. All right, getting some hits in. Ooh. All right. That was a nice burst. Let's go ahead and move on to, uh, what's that thing called? Helios? I think it's Helios. Man, I still don't know the names. I'm so disappointed in myself. All right. Oh man, I couldn't even launch my Beyblade. There we go. So Helios, like, you see, TT keeps making bigger Beyblades, but they haven't made a bigger stadium yet. Like, when is that gonna happen? 
I really want there to be some contact before things get wild. Okay. I think I weak launched there, but no big deal. Okay. Jeez. Yo, Zone's pretty sick though. I think that's what it's called, Zone. Um, it's basically Exceed, but just plastic. Okay. Get a few more battles in. Jeez, this chassis is like, it's like a razor blade. Okay, Helios got that one. Hard shots, but dang, Helios is dominating right now. Okay, it's much better. Okay. Wow. Let me go ahead and just I'm gonna launch Helios again. Boom. Okay, that's sick. That is cool. I mean, it wasted a ton of stamina, but that was cool. And Proto took that. If you guys don't know, Helios does have a mode change, so I think this is the by blade mode. Let me switch it, do a couple more battles, and then we'll call it good. So we're in 10 blade mode now, so the contact points are um, out on the chassis. It should be a little bit more aggressive. Yeah, I could tell it is. These things are so recoily. Oh man, that was, what am I doing? I want a weak launch, but not that weak. <laughs> Yo, don't sleep on Helios, because this thing is surprisingly good. Gosh. Just accelerated. All right, who's gonna take this? I, I think it's, to be fair, I launched Proto like way after. GG's, I guess. <laughs> um, it destroyed Ragnarok. So I'm not surprised. Um, Helios put up a good fight though. But yeah, for being a super basic layer, this is insane. All right, you just saw the battles. And honestly, all I can say is that I'm, I'm impressed. I'm impressed with the people that I've been working with. Big, big shout out to Weeaboo and Level Zero um, just for their progress and making a functional model. Um, and I'm just impressed with its performance. I mean, it is a circle at the end of the day, so this thing will hold up well, but all I can tell you guys is uh, stay tuned for much, much more on this channel. Seriously, for real, um, 3D printing will be a thing on this channel once again. So just stay tuned. Anyway, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.